Um, the fastest operations that you can do in my cluster are basically primary key requests or lookups. And the reason for that is, of course, that the data uh, has been partitioned. So the request uh, for a particular role will be uh, automatically, um, transparently uh, routed to the correct data node. And because each data node is working on a subset of, of, uh, of, of the database, the, set, the data set, um, it's very, very uh, read and, and write scalable. If you need to increase the performance uh, of the backend, for example, it's very easy to just add more data nodes that can handle uh, the rest of the, or you can distribute the, the load to, to a couple of uh, other data nodes to handle the, more of the requests that, uh, that you might have. So my cluster is really good at scaling writes and also reads uh, in this case. Um, my cluster also uses pessimistic locking. So, um, you know, basically means that the transaction as it goes goes along, uh, it will acquire all the locks that it needs. So at commit time, uh, uh, you're, you know, you're actually 100% sure that the commit will, will succeed. And this is a bit different than what Galera cluster does, and we'll, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that uh, later. Um, joins, index, and table scans are done a bit differently. Um, those requests are sent simultaneously to all of the data nodes at once. So let's say you have a table scan. That table scan request is being sent to all these four data nodes. And it will start scanning uh, the table for the rows. And then it will send the subset of, of, of the table that it has back to the SQL node, back to the MySQL server. And that's where you do the, the actual merging of, of the results. And after the merging has been done, that, that result is being sent back, back to, the, uh, to the client. Now, so as you can see, this is a very distributed database. So the performance is highly uh, dependent on the type of net network latency that you have uh, you know, between your data nodes and between your MySQL node and the data nodes and so on. So network latency is very important for the performance of MySQL. Um, so if you intend to migrate to, to MySQL cluster, there's some uh, limitations as always. Um, one big limitation is that uh, you have a limit of the row size. Uh, it's 14K. Uh, so if you're coming from InnoDB, for example, that might be an issue. Um, there are ways to solve it by converting some of the columns that you have into, into blobs. And because blobs doesn't count to the, to the record size in MySQL cluster. But that's a big issue for, 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 for some. And it often takes a lot more work to, to migrate a InnoDB uh, based application to MySQL cluster if you want to have optimal performance. It's, it's very rare that you can just you know, port or change the storage engine for the table for MySQL cluster. So it re usually requires some, some tuning and some, some possible redesign of the, of the schema. Uh, and also, you know, every table, as I said before, it's very important that, that it has a primary key. And uh, uh, you can also, in MySQL cluster, you can also select between having um, in-memory based tables or disk-based tables. So in-memory tables would be the fastest option, but you know there's a limit on how much you know, memory you can have uh, on your server. So for those cases uh, where you have you know huge amounts of, of data, then uh, you can try to use disk-based tables. And the disk-based tables have the same concept as in a DB. I mean you have a, a buffer for for a disk data. And uh, you know the performance-wise are, are probably a bit different, but uh, if you have a, a you know a too large data set that would won't fit into memory, then, then this based uh, tables is an option. Now, um, performance-wise, I said uh, network uh, latency is very important. So a dedicated one gigabit net network is is almost uh, the minimum requirement. Um, it's a bit write intensive. The, there's a lot of writes going on without you know without uh, getting you know without you having too much write traffic from uh, from from applications because it does what's called local checkpointing and global checkpointing. So local checkpointing basically it flushes out the, the data memory to disk. So every yeah every few seconds or or, or depending on how much change has been done, the data memory is actually flushed uh, to disk. And then of course you have a, a global transaction. So so the, the disk sub subsystem is also very important for for MySQL cluster. And uh, in order to convert in a DB-based uh, applications to, to, to MySQL, um, the straightforward way is, of course, just changing the, the, the storage engine, but uh, and also, of course, do a, a, you know, a backup and restore uh, if, if it's possible. 
um, some deployment scenarios uh, with mesh cluster for an extra slide. Um, there's a limit on how big a mesh cluster can be. Um, the limit here is, is 255 nodes, and that's that's including uh, all types of nodes, data nodes, management nodes, SKL nodes, and so forth. Um, there's also a limit on how many data nodes that you can have, and right now um, it's still uh, 48 data nodes, so you can have at most 48 data nodes. Now, uh, Oracle MySQL is recommending um, they set a limit on the on the max size of the data set that they think a master cluster is, is capable and it's not a technical limit it's more like a practical limit so they usually say that MySQL cluster is good at handling up to let's say three terabytes of data and you can use three terabytes all in memory flight but then you would probably require a lot of nodes and, and, and a lot of memory uh, on your servers and of course having one single uh, cluster is is Process a single point of failure, right? So, uh, most of the deployments out there usually use a, a master and slave cluster setup. So, you, uh, you use MySQL asynchronous replication to, to replicate from the master cluster to the slave cluster. And because you're using MySQL replication, um, you have the option of using you know, various replication topologies like master to master, uh, master slave circular, and so on. Uh, but you know, having just one uh, MySQL replication channel is is an issue here, of course, because that's that's another single point of failure. So in order to to handle that, uh, what you often also do is set up a secondary um, uh, MySQL replication channel. And this secondary replication channel is not active, of course, because that will cause problems. So uh, the only so the primary replication channel is active, and then um, you have to monitor the primary replication channel, of course, and then if that primary replication channel goes down, you you fail over to the secondary uh, replication channel. And uh, right now, most people do that either manually or, or, or scripted. Um, you can also have with MySQL cluster a, a multi-master replication between the clusters, because MySQL cluster supports um, you know, conflict detection and has a bunch of resolution function that that you can apply when when a conflict uh, happens, and it's basically on a, on a, based on a timestamp type of, of conflict detection. But the thing is, you have to actually define in in a couple of custom tables in in the NDB cluster uh, uh, in NDB cluster where you where you define which table and which column that you think will have a conflict, and then also which resolution method that you would like to apply uh, when that happens. So it, it is quite flexible, but it's a bit you know, messy to set it up probably, and then of course you have to you know, change that if your application changes and so, and so on. Uh, okay, um, Galea Cluster. Um, so Galea Cluster is another uh, uh, clustering solution for, um, uh, for MySQL, and it's primarily targeted for uh, the application using the InnoDB storage engine. Um, and Galera uh, was developed initially by a company uh, called Codership, or is still <laughs> developed by, 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 by Codership. And they started to put out you know, demo releases of, of Galera cluster around 2009. And uh, we at several lines uh, started to put out a, a you know, database deployment package with Galera around 2011, so we were quite early uh, in terms of, of jumping on the, the Galera bandwagon. And Galera is a synchronous multi-master replication technology, and it's basically a plug-in to the MySQL server. Um, it provides, you know, it, it's the same with, with the MySQL cluster, is that you can read and write to any log, uh, to any, do, any node. But uh, so there's no master failover, there's no, you know, usually there's no slave lag because all, all are masters. And uh, uh, because you have, you know, uh, you can also have multiple, you can also have geographical replication or asynchronous replication between uh, Galera clusters. And Galera cluster is 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 being is being sent out uh, by Codership, but also Pecona has its has a, has its extra DB cluster. My DB uh, also has its uh, uh, Galera cluster. So you have different three different vendors basically. To, to, to try and, 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 uh, and test and test Galera on. Um, 
the recommended number of nodes for Galera um, is, is three, and the, and the main reason for that is because you, you want to avoid um, a split brain scenario. Um, if you only have two, two, two nodes, then um, because of the way uh, you know, uh, split brain and, and quorum rules works is that um, if you have a split brain, then, then both nodes will be unavailable to work because you, know, you need to have a majority, right? So, so minimum three nodes is very important if you cannot you know, afford the service for three nodes, for example, or, or, or nodes, then um, you know, Galera provides uh, a process called GARD-D, which is an arbitrator, basically. It acts as a node, but uh, uh, it will act as the third node, but then you don't need to have physical you know, three, three real data for node in that case. Um, with Galera, though, um, so, so MISO cluster does what's called pessimistic uh, uh, locking. Uh, with Galera, uh, it's a bit different. Uh, Galera does uh, you know, cluster-wide optimistic locking. Now, on a single database node, it does the same as, 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 as it does on, in a DB, uh, and that's you know, pessimistic locking. So it will acquire all the locks uh, that it needs uh, when the transaction runs. But uh, right before it does the, the commit it, it, in Galera, it will actually send out the, the transaction, the, the right set to the other nodes to check if there might, poss if there might possibly be a, a conflict or not. Now, uh, and if there is a conflict, what happens is that um, the node that actually was trying to commit first will win that, that battle, and the node that came second will return a deadlock error back to the, to the, client, to the client application. Now, this could be a surprise if you um, if you've been running on a single MySQL server and everything has been working really, really fine, and then you just um, you know, deploy that application on, on Galera, and suddenly you start to see um, you know, deadlock errors coming out, and that happens can happen pretty easily. For example, for for sequence tables uh, type of, of, of hot tables. So you have to think about that when when you when you um, you know want to merge an uh, migrate an application to Galera. And one thing to, to so a couple, there are a couple of solutions to, to that, and one thing is that if you get the deadlock error back to the application, is that you just retry that, that transaction. Another thing is that um, you only do insert to one of the, of the Galera nodes, and you can use, for example, HAProxy to set up uh, a scenario like that, so that you connect to a specific port, and if you connect to that port, it will just do uh, the, the writes into into one of the database nodes. And of course, you have you can also you know make you know schema and, and query changes to to help you avoid those type of messy uh, situations. Um, the performance of, of Galera is also you know dependent on the replication latency, or sorry, the network latency. Uh, and also, you know how 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 slow the the, the slowest node is in in your Galera cluster. Um, in terms of scalability, of course, with master cluster you can scale. Uh, this this really um, no limit or uh, there's a limit, but with master cluster it's you know it's very scalable. It's a very scalable solution for writes. Uh, Galera is not really uh, at the same level, but uh, we've had customers using up to up to uh, nine Galera nodes without without having uh, any real issues in terms of uh, loading the network too much and things like that. Um, some Galera concept. Um, Galera has this this concept of primary component. Um, so during normal operation, um, the whole Galera uh, cluster is a primary component. If you're starting to have you know node failures and network splits, these type of things will create uh, different uh, separate components, and only the primary component can be uh, is operational. Right? So the way you you select the primary components basically is that. Uh, if the component is more than 50% of the nodes in the cluster, then it, Galera will consider that as a primary component, and that part of, of, of the cluster will remain up and operational, while the other part will be blocking and will try to re rejoin the rest of the, the rest of the cluster. 